We're gonna talk about this dong is here today. How to know when the redis are ready. The whole thing got ripe and it would be very long. Dye seeds. Look how many of them. Hi guys, it's Katy here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is gonna be all about Ethereum berries. Now, I've done a lot of videos on Ethereum seeds, but finally, finally, I have made my own seeds. Round of applause. So this is the mother plant that I self-pollinated. This is Ethereum forgetii silver stripe that I've received from Equigenera. I think it was roughly around a year ago. Mama plant is gorgeous, by the way. Initially, when I got this plant, she wasn't really impressive when she was small and I was on the verge of selling it, but I'm glad I didn't. I think this is the second inflow that she's put out and she's also quite huge of a beast. So the first inflow I've pollinated it with, I don't know what, it was a forgetty and it aborted because only like nine of the berries actually got pollinated. This was the second inflow that I have used its own pollen on it. So it is self, it should look variations of what you see here. It's not gonna be a clone. A clone would be if I were to propagate it, then you would get exactly the same plant. But now what happens is the genes that this plant has are gonna get recombined and we're gonna see some variations of the genes, which I'm really excited because this plant, the sheen, on these leaves is absolutely amazing and it already reminds me of a Lux hybrid. The Lux hybrid was in works but the info aborted. I'm gonna keep trying though. We're gonna talk about this dong is here today. So now I'm gonna take you through a process of berry formulation. I'm not gonna go into the pollination just because I've covered that thoroughly in a few of my videos. You can check them out if you're curious about that. But today we're gonna talk about after you've had a successful pollination. Now this plant in particular already showed me that the inflow was successfully pollinated when it was midway through the male phase. Flowers that were successfully pollinated, they were producing pollen but at the same time they have started to turn green so I already kind of anticipated that it was successfully pollinated. Thing to note, I did pollinate this I think it was on 27th of January. And then what it has started doing is bottom part of the inflow has started to turn green. Now you can see that there are no seeds on the whole inflow and that's just because a part of the inflow got stigmatic fluid and not the whole. I think it's still a relatively juvenile plant. On the previous inflow or even the one after, I haven't had the full st spadix and stigmatic fluid and I just wouldn't want to miss the window where I I can actually pollinate. So I was like, YOLO, even if I get 40 berries, that's fine with me. It was less than a third that was successfully pollinated. So if the whole thing got ripened, it would be very long. And then what started to happen is the whole part started to turn green. First, it was the parts that were successfully pollinated and then eventually the part of the inflow that was not pollinated. What it also did, it started to get bumpy from the start of the spadix and it kind of gradually went up. You would see a little seeds that started to sprout out and it can be really slow in the beginning. I was like, am I even noticing any difference after a month's time? Because it was really getting slow. And then at one point it got like very bumpy and you could clearly see that something interesting is happening. There were still no signs of, you know, round and plump berries. So in the last month it usually really speeds up and what it does, for me, the spadix have started to turn reddish. A few weeks after that, the berries have also started to turn red at the top and then it gradually went down. And that all happened within like two weeks and now I think I only have like a few more berries on this how to know when the redis are ready. They will start popping out of the spadix and you will easily remove them. They just want to get out. You won't miss that. So that's the process of ripening the berries. A lot of questions that I get is how long does it take for berries to ripen and I'd say that really depends. First it depends on how you care for your plant, if it has the optimal growing conditions and the main reason or like the cause for it is the species itself. So your basics for Gedii crystallinum magnificum, they tend to ripen really fast so within three and four months whereas Anthurium terinervium and luxuriance can take more than a year so be prepared and I think for Warakwianums it's 
more than a half a year, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, Vici I also takes more than a year. And now I'm gonna go over some of the special plant prego care that you should be doing. So the plant will usually slow down on its growth. What this means is you won't be seeing many new leaves emerge. This plant only pushed out that leaf when it was producing this berry, which isn't significantly bigger than the previous one. So they won't be sizing up. They can be smaller just because majority of the energy is going into the spadex. They may also lose some of the older leaves just because they suck up those nutrients as it is very energy and nutrient demanding process. Now speaking of the nutrients be sure that you are thoroughly fertilizing it. If you're not fertilizing it enough it will sacrifice the older leaves and it can also abort the inflow so this is really important. Another important tip I would give out do not let the plant completely dry out just because if there is no water, that thing is gonna go, it's gonna get bored. It's the first thing the plant will sacrifice to kind of save itself. So don't ever let it go too dry. And another controversial topic is that you shouldn't repot while your plant is producing berries. And while that is true, because with each repotting, you additionally stress out the plant and you kind of want to minimize the stress factors. If the plant is very root bound, which my forgetting was, or if it has root rot, or if it has any underlying issue that's posing a risk to overall health of your plant, you should take it out. Do not hesitate to do so. I repotted this guy when it was producing berries. It didn't seem to mind. And my crystal that's currently also holding an inflow, I have repotted it just because it was getting some weird rot. And I was really ready that the inflow would abort within a week and it's still kind of fine. So I think it's not that big of a deal that everyone makes it out to be. If you seriously disrupt the root ball, then I suppose yes, but you generally don't want to do that unless is an emergency. Now I'm gonna show you how to pick the berries and then we're gonna plant the seeds. They are very easy to pick up because they are ripened very much so. You can even see through some of the berries they've started to turn green and you can see that the seeds inside have already started germinating so that's really fun. So I've picked majority of the berries that were ripened. You can see there are a lot of empty spots where the berries were sitting. There are still quite some that are growing at somewhat in the middle of the spadex. It is normal that the ones closer to the light would ripen faster. Here are all the berries that I've gathered and I already have toilet paper set up here because we are gonna squeeze and get the seeds out. I also have a jar of fresh water here because I'm gonna put the seeds inside just so they can additionally clean and hydrate even more. Okay, so here are all of the seeds that I... Every cotton time! Anyhow, here are all of the seeds that I have. I have not counted. We're gonna do that afterwards. We're gonna be trying a new media for planting. Hear me out. I've made a big batch of what seems to be really unpleasant. So we have a sphagnum moss, then I've mixed some perlite in it and some really fine bark. Just because knowing me and my current energy to repot plants, these boys will be in this mix for some time, so might as well make it comfy. I will be putting them up in these seedling containers that I got for very cheap. So they come with, you get these seedling trays, which don't have holes and optimistic cat as I am. Started to make holes in one and then I gave up after half because I will probably use two or three of these and I was lazy. So I've decided I won't have holes and I'll be just more careful with watering. Anyways, you get the bottom of this, which could store water. And then you also get the top part, which is from see-through plastic and kind of get a mini greenhouse. We've gone the cheap and effective way. So that's where I'm gonna be planting them and yeah. Let's go. So here is our seedling tray. I will now fill it with the mix. I did slightly chop the sphagnum moss. I could do it more, but I don't have the sufficient equipment. So it is what it is. Just gonna fill those pockets. 
I don't want to pack it too tight, but at the same time, I want to give them as much room and media to grow into. So we are done. It's not the prettiest, but it is functional and this is what I'm all about. So I think there are 24 of these places and I will now go and put the seeds into it. Die seeds. Look how many of them. So the first batch is done, you can see it kind of place them in the middle and kind of just push them down a little bit so they can be in contact with the media and now I'm gonna do the rest probably a lot of these so wish me luck! A few moments later I am done. We currently have 108 seeds. I have no freaking clue where I'm gonna put all of this because I don't have that much space in my greenhouse and I was kind of thinking I would germinate them here somewhere in my room. I knew it was gonna be a lot but not that a lot. Anyhow, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you find it useful. Let me know if you have any berries right now or any anthuriums are in the process of growing berries. So yeah, that was it. If you enjoyed please give it a like and hit that notification button and I'll see you next time. Bye!